Hi, everyone. All right. I am going to do this. Um, don't know how long it's going to be, but I'm going to try to do it quickly because I don't really want to spend much time on this, but I feel that I have to. And you'll understand why I have to in a little bit. But here's the article that I mentioned in my last video. Well, not that short video that I posted on the fake news, but the earlier video that I posted today. Two sides to every coin when security measures become imprisonment. That wall, when it was talked about during the Obama years, there were so many people who were able to see that the wall that keeps people out can also keep people in. So this article written by uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Johnson, um, he is a Green Beret, or retired Green Beret of the United States Army Special Forces. He writes, no matter how well intentioned Trump is, there are forces at work in the United States that hold more power than he does. Subtleties are present that are usually either overlooked or intentionally downplayed so as not to jar the consciousness of those who see them. Yes, we need increased border security on the Mexican border, and we need to stem the tide, the tsunami is more appropriate, flooding this country with illegal aliens. Just as with cattle, however, the fence around that pasture that keeps things out simultaneously keeps the cattle in. The fence works in both directions. And this has been an issue that has been ongoing for decades. So you're going to tell me that we cannot secure that border really quickly? No, we can. So this is part of the uh, engineering, the deliberate engineering of the destruction of the United States. Um, there was an article in The Hill that was posted last week. Thousands of Americans stand to be denied passports due to unpaid taxes. So this really shouldn't come as any surprise. I posted videos on when when this was first announced. Well, why is it now being implemented during the Trump years? He wants to make America great again. That means give back freedom to Americans, but now um, this denying people passports because they haven't paid taxes, it parallels other restrictions such as not permitting those with uh, having not paid child support or those who are going through bankruptcy proceedings. They can't depart the country. And the law, the article refers to the article in the Hill. It refers to that law having been passed in 2015 requiring the IRS and the State Department to deny U.S. citizens a passport if they owe more than 51000 in tax debt. Now, we are seeing and I have seen record number of taxes collected, record number of taxes collected. They seem to come out with that quarterly. The taxes collected are unbelievable. And yet there are 362,000 Americans who owe more than 51000 in tax debt interesting how we just continually uh, make record collections over and over and over again and yet Americans I don't even think <laughs> an awful lot of Americans can even pay their taxes at this point um, so you have 362,000 Americans who won't be able to get a passport if they want one um, or will be denied getting on a plane 
if they show up with a passport, but then add to that all of the people who are in child support arrears and those going through bankruptcy proceeding. That's an awful lot. I'd say over a million who no longer can leave the country. The incremental steps to imprison Americans continue. Um, major metropolitan airports such as Atlanta and Chicago are taking biometric information requiring it of all airline passengers to pass under the oak of facial recognition software and stored for security reasons. We the taxpayers continue to fund our own imprisonment. The public is being shaped and manipulated. Having lost conscience, its consciousness is now being molded and made to feel as if there is a need for security, safety, and being led. Well, it's not just now being molded, but it has been going on increasingly so since 9-11. By appealing to the hierarchy of needs, the powers that be are fostering a climate of fear and creating a need for increased government intervention and control in the interests of security. Now, uh, the threat has never been abandoned. It's just changed in form and expanded. Foreign threats of attack have not abated. The focal point it switched from the Arab enemy to the Russians and the Chinese. The shootings at schools, public places, bombings, uh, like in Austin, Texas, have been used to structure more police presence, more surveillance, and an increased feeling by citizens of being unsafe. CCTV cameras continue to sprout up. The technology increases to monitor, record, photograph, eavesdrop, and control the lives and movements of the average citizen. Branches of government, craft laws, Congress, and selectively interpret those laws, Supreme Court, that abrogate our rights while exempting themselves from the provisions they inflict upon us. A president can go either direction, and whichever way is chosen, the tide of movement is not halted. The paradigm shift toward totalitarianism continues either incrementally in leaps and bounds or at full force unrelenting like during the Obama years but they haven't stopped. So the walled fortress in the name of security becomes the fully enclosed prison and yeah just because Trump has said an awful lot that you like and just because Trump has done a few good things, it does not mean that you then trust him completely. The wall. First of all, I said in the last video, that wall, it, he asked Congress for $1.6 billion to, to, uh, to restore 14 miles of an old fence to build 60 miles of new fence I think we've got 654 miles of fence you add all of that up together and it's about one-third of fence one-third protection so when everybody is applauding Trump for building that fence well, if you uh, you really want that wall, you really want that you know fence. Wait until it's complete, then do your applauding. TSA screeners win immunity from abuse. You can no longer sue the TSA. Uh, that means that they can do whatever the hell they want to do to you, as they have been doing. Except when you give immunity to these guys, these these. Uh, women who wear this uniform, you give immunity to them, well, they now can just do whatever the hell they want. And uh, the abuse only gets worse. Zoos 
installing checkpoints, searching visitors and their bags. Really? So, the uh, police state continues. The economy is not doing well. Now, I have posted several videos on uh, <laughs> how the economy is not doing well. Americans are still hurting an awful lot. So when they come out and say the economy is doing well and Americans are back to work, and we have now, what is it, 4.3 unemployment, 4.3 percent unemployment, do you realize that we've got 96 million Americans out of the labor force and they are just not counted? So many Americans have gone over that financial cliff and you don't get to hear about them. You get to hear how fabulous the economy is doing for those who are still comfortable. But all of those who got out of that comfort zone and went off that cliff, they've gotten marginalized. You just don't hear about them. And here, an article, America's rapidly accelerating retail apocalypse is being fueled by one enormously painful economic problem. The middle class is dying, still dying. The middle is disappearing. Low and middle income customers increasingly shop at discounters and dollar stores, forcing retailers that once served the middle class to close up shop. So, what our country has become, the gap between the rich and the poor, is growing ever wider and continues. Those tax cuts, I have heard from people that they have not benefited. Who really benefited? Corporations and the rich. rich. Um, so the most successful business in the sector have become a distinct split between luxury and budget stores. And malls are empty more and more. Retail stores are are closing up shop, and many people think that this economy has rebounded from that great recession in 2008. It's not true. And what, what, where are we moving? Okay. Um, the opportunities that you get to hear from, like, Sean Hannity. Oh, my God. America has been made great again. Americans now have more opportunities under Trump than they ever did under Obama. What are those opportunities? Are they opportunities for um, entrepreneurs? Are they opportunities for individuals to open up their businesses? No. The opportunities, you get to work at a corporation in a mega region. So, if you just look at this one indicator, all of these ret retail stores closing up shop, how many are still closing their doors during the Trump years, you will realize that those two, the, the economy's great, and, well, retail stores closing at a rapid pace, you can't say that the economy is great. Something is wrong with that picture. And local shopping centers, so the malls are really becoming these dead zones. And local shopping centers, vacancies at local shopping centers increased in more than 70% of metro areas. Indianapolis, Dayton, Wichita are the highest they have the highest rate of retail stores closing. Corporations are still taking over. And what happens with many of those vacancies? Just like the 96 million who just have become this ignored class in the United States, so are an awful lot of those zombie stores, stores that emptied out and became zombie stores in zombie malls. 
or the Toys R Us stores in bad areas with zero hopes of finding another retail tenant, they're not counted as vacant. Again, let's just ignore all of those vacancies and say the economy is doing great. You got to look deeper at what is taking place. So when they're not counting all of those vacancies, well, it's easy to say that the economy is doing fine. But they're moving everybody into online digital shopping. And what's available? Amazon, Walmart, even online. What you are seeing is a corporate takeover of retail. And there are many who claim that the United States is now a third world nation. Third world nation. Third world is different from a failed state. Failed state refers to a failed government of a nation state, a government which no longer fulfills the minimum duties of a functional state, basic security rule of law. Well, you can actually put us in that category because the rule of law only applies to the ordinary American. There is no law for that quote-unquote elite class. Third world refers to a nation-state which was dysfunctional and parasitic for the vast majority of its res residents but that worked extremely well for entrenched elites who controlled most of the wealth and political power. So here are the core characteristics of dysfunctional but stable states that benefit the entrenched few at the expense of the many. Third world nation. Ownership of stocks and other assets is highly concentrated in entrenched elites. The infrastructure of the nation used by the many is poorly maintained and costly to operate. You know, I saw a headline today for some uh, local South Carolina paper, and it said that South Carolina has to borrow millions of dollars for improvements to their own state buildings. Wow. Well, the borrowing of that money, who is going to get to pay it back? South Carolinians. The financial political elites have exclusive access to parallel systems of transport, health care, education. Americans are not outraged that those representatives that they're paying their salary, they have exquisite health care while we get shit health care. Wow! Education Common Core. The elite send their kids to private schools and many of them actually send their kids to schools that don't have Wi-Fi. Public schools? What are, what do public schools offer? Common Core that is absolutely destroying the minds of the young. They sit in very dangerous environments with that Wi-Fi. They now get to read not books, but they read from these Chrome um, Chrome I don't know what they're called, but it's all online. And wow, doesn't that make it easy for them to delete the history that they don't like and rewrite it the way they want it to read. Um, the elites fund lavish monuments to their own glory, disguised as civic or national pride. There are two classes that only interact in strictly controlled ways, the wealthy who live in gated, guarded communities and who rule all the institutions, public and private, and the debt serfs 
who are divided into well-paid factotums, I've not, never even seen that word, um, technocratic lackeys, and enforcers who serve the interest of the entrenched elite, and rest, the rest of the populace who own virtually nothing and have zero power. Cartels and quasi-monopolies are parasitically extracting the wealth of the nation for their elite owners and managers. The elites use the extreme violence and repressive powers of the government to suppress, marginalize, and or destroy any dissent. There are two systems of law, one for the elites, 10 million penalties, 10 million dollar penalties for ripping off the public for 10 billion, no personal liability for outright fraud. Right, the bankers, it was, um, oh my God, the Attorney General under uh, Obama. I see his face and his name has escaped me. But he came out publicly and stated, we are not going to prosecute the bankers for fraud. It will hurt the economy. <laughs> and Americans just accepted that. Okay. So the bankers get to commit fraud. We have allowed this. What we live, we have all contributed to its manifestation. So you've got our representatives in Congress passing laws that protect them and then we've got the laws, the same law, like that insider trader trading law. They're protected but we'll go to jail. So there are, that we do have a two-tiered justice system. Uh, dysfunctional institutions with unlimited power to extract money via junk fees, licensing fees, parking tickets, penalties, late fees, all without recourse. And the well-paid factotums, I, I might be mispronouncing that, bureaucrats, the technocratic lackeys and enforcers who fatten their own skims, and pensions at the expense of the public and will lavishly serve the interests of the entrenched elites embrace the delusion that they're wealthy and the system is working great, the USA is definitely a third world nation. And the trade wars, so many people applauding Trump. Finally, he's trying to balance out trade with China, do you know how many imports we get from China? So the trade war will have a huge impact on our economy. It's already showing up. And farmers, any export um, of our exports on corn and soy and wheat, they're already getting hit and finding it difficult to get bank loans because China is about to impose its tariffs on our exports. And guess who will win this war? China. Because we import practically everything now. You will begin to go buy a product that's from China and it will be much more expensive. The lumber, the, the uh, construction industry is already feeling the impact. Lumber is far more expensive. So, you know, look, you can look at everything that's going on everything that Trump is doing. And there are two sides of the coin. So 
just I, I'm simply asking everybody to it's kind of like the jury has decided the second Trump came into office that he was going to make America great again. Just take an objective look at everything that is taking place. And I would suggest not going on either side, you know. Um, and while you're taking an objective look at what is taking place in Washington, D.C., start taking some action in your local area. All right, I, I'm going to be getting to another video. A video that I really don't want to do. And if I said this in the beginning of this video, um, I apologize for repeating it, but yeah, I do have to do that video because I don't like how some people have been characterized, characterizing their characterizations of people who don't support Trump. Um, it's mean. It is a lie, and I do feel like I have to speak to it. So that will be my next video. All links are below. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, there are many Trump supporters who are doing just what the Obama supporters did. And that's unfortunate. Can we not think, can we try to do something different instead of the same old, same old? You sit back and wait for this guy to make America great again as it's being destroyed. Sitting back is killing us. And not one guy is going to make this country great again because you know what? It has been so thoroughly destroyed. And there's an awful lot of red flags that people seem to ignore about Trump. And they will be brought up in the next video.